of kingdom giving. In every church, there are people that claim blessing. I claim it. I receive it. You are correct. But kingdom prosperity follows a principle. The prosperity of the covenant covers you, your entire family. But you never assess them until you begin to walk in spiritual understanding. Spiritual understanding. That is why securing this understanding brings you to the realm of unlimited blessings. Kingdom giving does not only limit you to material blessings, but it opens you up to every other aspect of blessings that pertains to life. Every other blessings. So your giving can work out your marriage. It can work out your promotion. It can work out your next phase of success next phase of open heaven so it's not only targeted at getting material things we are not doing trade by butter because we are giving we are securing our destiny and because you lack this understanding you, you struggle to walk in it because anytime you hear giving the first thing that comes to your mind they want to collect something from me God is never hungry God does not need our daily contribution to remain sustained in heaven. You can labor to be rich, but you cannot labor to be blessed. You can labor to be rich. But you need a kingdom understanding to practice the blessing. The blessing is practiced. The purpose for which God ordained wealth is so that he will establish his covenant concerning me and you, concerning our family. That is why Deuteronomy 8 and verse 18 Deuteronomy 8 and verse 18 But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant which he swore unto thy father as it is this day this day It is God that giveth power to get wealth. You may walk in four places and not be wealthy. You can even be walking in shell and still not be wealthy. Yes. It is God that giveth the power to get wealth. So your access to wealth is tied to kingdom practice. And only kingdom promoters are permitted to experience this order of blessings. God took an oath, put his very life on the line just to commit himself. That is why I said, by myself have I sworn. In blessing, I will bless you. In multiplying, I will multiply you. That is
is why giving in the covenant is the highest realm of living. If you are not giving, you are not living. Giving is the highest realm of living. The highest realm of living. People that have understood it, they don't struggle. It flow with ease. Psalm 89 and verse 34. Psalm 89 and verse 34. 34. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. My covenant will I not break. My covenant will I not break. God is not a breaker of his word, but rather he upholds his word so that each and every one of us experience daily realities. So when you enter this realm of giving, you become irresistible. No force can resist you. You can't stand in the way of covenant practitioners. Because by your giving, you assess every blessing that pertains to life. Every blessing that pertains to life. I will mention too many testimonies to buttress this fact. A covenant is a deal put in place by God with a clearly defined terms and it's based on an oath. It's a deal between me and God, between you and God. It's a covenant deal. When a covenant is in place, no force can separate you and God. No force can disconnect you and God. We see covenant takes place in the marriage. At the point of the covenant, everyone will say, with this ring, I wear thee. I give it to you as a token of my love. From this day, henceforth, we shall become what? One. The covenant is sealed. And to let you know that it's a covenant, the moment they finish saying that, they'll bring communion to seal it. I hear wrong saying now. They bring communion and give them communion. It is sealed. I want you to understand that God is a covenant keeper. Just as scripture told us, he watched over his word to perform it. He watched over his word. You can't enter into a covenant with the God that possesses the heavens and the earth. The one whose a thousand hill, cattle upon a thousand hill belongs to, and end up poor. You can't be in a covenant with God and end up barren. The covenant is a damager of barrenness. It's a damager of poverty. It's a damager of lack. It's a damager of stagnation. It's a damager of frustration. So when you enter the covenant realm, you come out of the, road, of the zone of stress. It takes the covenant to dissolve pressure. It takes the covenant to dissolve pressure. You hear me? Nothing can move God into action like the covenant. So for you to be brought into a covenant with God is an awesome privilege. Because anywhere you stay, things must work. I say things must work. I say things must work. Because of you alone, God can change the tide of things. I say God can change the tide of things. That is why you must understand how this covenant of giving works. It makes your life to flourish. It makes your life to flourish. You flourish with the blessing. 
But I want you to understand that the covenant does not just occur. Someone will initiate its working by his giving. Luke chapter 6 and verse 38. Luke chapter 6 and verse 38. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Pressed down. Shaking together and running over shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you met with that, it shall be measured to you again. So it is again and again. Genesis 18, Genesis 18 and verse 17. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Verse 18 now. Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation. And all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. <laughs> a covenant has taken place concerning him. So when a covenant is at work, nothing is hidden from you. God can hide any blessing from you. God can shut any door from you. So giving is more of a spiritual transaction. Anytime you give out something, a transaction has taken place. Giving is more of a spiritual transaction. Now let me tell you this now. Someone will wonder, can this be true? Yes, let me show you something. If giving is not a spiritual transaction, why are those wicked and my, those wicked beggars taking your money to wicked places. If giving is not a transaction, I remember. Remember, it, uh, I was telling you what I saw one day when we stopped by one pharmacy somewhere. We saw them; they were bringing that money. When they bring it, they will be cleaning it under. So what I just did, I just put my headlight heavy, full. You mean I put my heavy, headlight heavy? They just change direction. This guy don't see us. I don't give them lie lie. Those are not the kind of people God says I should give. Scripture says, do good first to the household of God. Charity begins at home. My own begin here. Some people think that by giving to those beggars that they are, they are, they are fulfilling a spirit. Uh, a service is a lie. You are increasing your poverty. I'm the one telling you. Because some of those people you are giving, they are taking it to, <laughs> they are herbalists. Giving is a spiritual transaction, not a physical donation. So when you have this spiritual understanding, you can provoke a blessing in your favor. When you give to the kingdom of God or to the church, you are not doing the church a favor, you are doing yourself a favor. You are doing yourself a favor. I remember one time I packaged the seed I wanted to send to Papa and uh, Bishop Abue. Someone I was working with, the wife saw it and said, ah, Why can't you be giving this kind of money? He said, No. The husband was hearing it. I said, I've been doing this thing since. I didn't start it here. He said, No. Papa is already rich. Papa is already rich. Papa is already rich. Do you know what I replied? Her? Papa does not need my money to increase. But I need the blessing that is flowing from him. I said, she said, no, we need to give that kind of thing. How will you give will determine how you will live. 
But do you know what? After we finished talking, the husband followed me to the office. He said, anytime you are giving, let me know. I said, Oga, I will not let you know. Do you know what I said? I will not let you know. <laughs> God loves a cheerful giver. Don't do because I am doing. Do because it is coming from your heart. We are not doing giving competition. Everyone is sowing his way to his glorious destiny. Anyone that makes a mockery of giving cannot escape financial hardship in this kingdom. So you make a mockery of giving today, you register for begging tomorrow. Anyone who calls others that are giving fools is the proper fool when the harvest will start. You become the proper fool. Original fool. I won't forget what Bishop told us in March this year. He said, the way, the way you are giving now, I see you overtaking so many of your seniors. They will be pretending as if they don't have, and they will never have. Now, what you have, who is dragging it with you? Are you hearing what I said? Who is dragging it with you? He said they will be pretending as if they don't have and they will never have. And those that have been giving regularly, consistently, because of understanding, they will just be going up and up and up and up. Do you know what? Giving can connect you to the grace of God. The grace of God. Scripture calls it the giving grace. <laughs> the way you give will determine the way you will live. The way you give. And there is nothing God is asking us to give now that he does, that he does not have. There is nothing God is asking us to give now that he has need of. He doesn't have need of it. Let's read Galatians chapter 4. Let's take it from verse 16. Let's take it from verse 16. And I therefore became your enemy because I tell you the truth. You know, when you tell some people the truth, they will hate you for a season. They zealously affect you, but not well. Yea, they will exclude you that you might affect them. Verse 18. But it is good to be zealously affected always. No, Philippians, sorry. Philippians 4 verse 16. Take it from verse 16 then to verse 19. For even in Thessalonica, ye sent once and again unto my necessity. Look at verse 17 now. Not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your, to whose account? Now verse 18. But I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an order of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well pleasing to God. Now look at this. But my God. But my God. But my God. All your needs. According to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. You know, people 
cram this one. They don't cram the other one. Am I saying the truth? My God shall supply all my needs according to his glory by Christ Jesus. They don't know what provoke my God shall supply. My God shall supply all my needs. Yes, so is not a liar. You can even sing it as a song. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches. Sing glory. He will give and just charge over me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me. For me, for me. Pause. <laughs> Remember verse 16, verse 17, and verse 18. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? So that you won't be singing only the song, My God shall supply all my needs. Remember the other one. They gave something first. It is your giving that provokes his supply. It is your giving that provokes his supply. Scripture says he gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. People that sow their seed, they don't beg for bread. If you are not an addicted giver, you are not entitled to regular supply. Supply goes with an addiction. To giving. Every time we call, lift up your offering. So we will go and look for five naira. Since they started coming to service, it's five naira they have been giving. You are the one that placed an embargo over yourself. You place an embargo over your family. So we intentionally go there and buy sweets so that they can have change. Am I saying the truth? If I'm lying, say I'm lying. We go and buy change, buy sweets so that they will have change. Five five naira. Until your offering changes, your suffering continues. I'm not saying it so that church offering will increase. It's so that your door will open. Your offering can open your door. Our offering is a spiritual worship. A proof of our love for God. That is why those who don't know how to worship God with their offering, <laughs> they worship their offering. Meaning they worship money. Should I tell you something? Money is your servant. Say with me, money is your servant. Is servant. No wonder, Job 22, let's read it. Scripture says you, you will lay up gold as dust. You will match money. Say with me, you will match money. Job 22, let's take it from verse 21. Acquaint now thyself with him and be at peace. Thereby good shall come unto thee. Receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth, and lay up his word in thy heart. If thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up. Thou shalt put away iniquity from thy tabernacle. Verse 24. Then thou shalt lay up gold as dust, and the gold of offer as the stones of the brook. Verse 25 now. Yea, the Almighty shall be thy defense, and thou shalt have plenty of silver. 
you will lay up gold as dust. You are not to worship money. Money is your servant. It's meant to go for errands for you. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? The same way our prayers are sent to God, that is how our offering also are sent to God. That's why it's called acceptable sacrifice. Acceptable sacrifice. So you must give God acceptable sacrifice. As long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest time shall know what? It can never cease. Whether you like it or not, even though dollar is 360, people will still be blessed. People will still buy car. People will still build house. Am I saying the truth? The price of dollar has not stopped people from going for vacation. Am I saying the truth? They will still go. They will still go. That's why you need to practice giving so that your life experience can change. You are just punishing yourself. Do like this. Do like this. Remain like that. When your hands stay like this for a long time, you begin to feel warm, Abby. But scripture said, a liberal soul shall be made what? There is he that withholdeth and tendeth to what? Poverty. But there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. What are the avenues that makes giving a reality? Now we have talked about worship offering. The second one is kingdom project. What is kingdom project? Anything that will make and advance the house of God. Your covenant seed for any covenant project is an open door for you. Open door for your family. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Hear me? If it is in your heart, God will put it in your hand. If it's not in your heart, you will begin to struggle. The reason why you are struggling in giving is because it's not yet in your heart. Let it be in your heart first. Watch out. God will now begin to open door for you to experience the manifestation. I remember a civil servant, I don't know whether it was Taraba or Jigawa. She desired a house of her own. And as a civil servant, you should know what her salary range should look like. She came to Shiloh one time and sold a Shiloh sacrifice, which is a kingdom project. Guess what? From selling recharge cards, God opened the door for her. The business grew. She was able to build a three-bedroom flat. How many remember that testimony? She built a three-bedroom flat. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. Time will fail me to talk in depth about my giving life. There are some things I cannot open my mouth and say to you now. Because some people may not sleep well. But I remembered when I desperately needed a change. I desperately needed a change. I went and packed all the gifts I've been getting. There was a gift of a Rolex watch that was given to me. While I was busy packing these things, my mother had, when I was packing, was hearing that something was making noise. She just came. What are you doing? I said, I want to go and sow this seed. He said, you have started. This is your madness. I've started again. I packed 
some plates that was given to me, breakable plates. I packed everything. I packed my ties. He said, where are you going? I said, I'm going to sow this thing. He said, you are not I will give you money to go and sow. He said, I will add your money to it. So I will, if you give me, I will add your money to it. That's how I left. I carried it and went and sold. I sold again. To the point that my yoga ones, they say, if we keep something for your room now, you go go so, you go carry our. <laughs> One day you go carry us go so. You carry us go so seed. Are you know saying now? That's how the thing has been going. There was a day I sold my shoe. Is this suit? The suit I've sold, they're over 50. I'll drop it, releasing the thing, releasing the thing. I thank God. I have crossed one realm, crossed another realm. I'm about breaking another realm now. Yeah. I say it without fear of anything. Six years ago, I stopped living by salary. My salary is now a regular seed from January to December. As it is coming, I am wiring it. Either I'm wiring to Papa or Bishop Abe or Bishop Aremu or Polenenche or Ibiomi. That's I'm wiring it. Or Pastor Jeme, I'm just wiring the thing. As it's coming, bia. As it's coming, bia. But the pocket can never be dry. As I'm sowing, I'm connecting to grace, connecting to favor, tearing the heavens open. Where my prayer cannot reach their proclamation, we tear it. Just a tearing. Let's leave this side now. The next one is tithing. Tithing is an avenue you can look. If you are not a tighter, see, see, things will be tight. Do like this, tight. That's how things will be for you. If you are not a tighter, you say the money is more tight. God will prove you in little things before he can prove you in big things. You know, when it is uh, 20,000, 100,000, that's when I begin to tight. He that is faithful in little much shall be added to him. If you cannot tithe 100 naira, it will be difficult for you to tithe 1,000 naira. Write it down, I say so. I remember when, <laughs> I will still say it again, I remember when I first saw one million in my account. It's time for tight. Guess what happened? When I packaged the tight, one devil was telling me, don't go. That money is too much, don't go. So it looks as if there was a struggle. How many have experienced that? Be sincere. God bless you. You will live long. Amen. You will touch money. Amen. It's like I was struggling to pay a tithe of 100,000. I forgot the money inside the bag. I enter service. The Holy Ghost was saying, you won't remember the tithe. The first was saying, Shebi is in the office now, another day. But you know what? I just, I say, if I don't break this rem now, I'm suffering myself. I just had to excuse myself. Went back, carried the offering. Do you know what? As I dropped that tight, it's like they pour me ice water. It's called inner peace. It's like they pour me ice water. As I break that rem, it's torn now. You're paying tight of 100,000 is like a, 
It's like you are, you are, I'm just going to Abuja Airport and traveling and coming back. I cannot be struggling to be paying tight of 100,000 now. That would be demotion if I try it. But you know, anytime you want to do it, that force will come. You remember? You have not paid children's school fees. You remember you have not bought this thing. The tight can wait. The army tight can wait. You don't give tight. You pay tight. Did you hear what I said? You don't give tight. You pay it. It is an obligation. You owe God. So if you hold it, <laughs> anytime you withhold tight, look at what you are doing. Divorce us. Mona, come on. Anytime you hold tight. Hear me? The devourer is not what you can bind. God said, I send the devourer to work havoc. That's why anytime you withhold your tight, devourers will come for a strike. Either they will baptize you with sickness or your car will just be getting beke, beke, or things will just be spoiling in your house. Am I saying the truth to someone? That's why you must not withhold your tithe. Your tithe ensures the heavens to be open. It ensures the heavens to be open. And by the grace of God now, I no longer give 10%. I know what comes in, so I must make sure it is above what I'm paying. Because when you pay in advance, you get in advance. <laughs> Let me surprise you. I am not at the mercy of your giving. My own giving provoke my own supply. That's why God can send anybody from anywhere to bless me. Can't you see the way I'm harassing you? It's to let you know I know it. It's not to intimidate. It's to let you know I know it. I'm provoking you to do your own. Any pastor that lives at the mercy of members will lose his ministry. He will become a beggar. He will be sending a message, anything for the man of God? <laughs> anything for the apostle? But the fathers that taught us, we didn't copy that from them. We didn't learn that kind from them. We learned the way of giving so that the thing will be flowing. The last one is the realm of quarterly sacrifice. He that goeth forth, bearing precious seed to sow, shall doubtless return. Say with me, return. Now let me tell you something. While I'm talking like this, I've grown to the level where God ministered to people in the dream to come and bless me. They see it in the dream and they will not be. You cannot see it and be at ease. You cannot see it and be at ease. One young man called me yesterday. He said, you taught me will be in 2013. I got that job in share. I said, shut up. Just go straight to the point. You know, that's how the 419, they start now. That, uh, you know, you pray for me. I'm not working in share. I said, keep quiet. Say what you want to say. We know we are no longer interested in share. In shell heaven. Shell is not heaven. There are some people that are there. Evil are you shelling them. I said, say what you want to say. He said, um, the spirit of God has been troubling me to sow this seed. And I want you to give me your account number. I didn't still give him. I didn't give him. I didn't even save his number. I said, okay, what are you doing? Now? Are you married? He started telling me story, 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 story. The next thing I'll say, please don't forget to send the account number. I'm not a beggar. My God will supply now, why I'm making this reference is because I don't know where he is. The thing has been wiring him. Sow your seed. <laughs> Fire your seed. Let me tell you this. Your seed is your chance to your top. There are places you will never beg to enter. Your seed will go and break barriers. There are jobs you will not tender or quote for, but they will not rest until they give it to you. Your seed. 
If it is muzzle, I don't think I will have seen what I am seeing now. But by giving, the kind of doors of opportunity that is opening me to, I'm wondering, is this normal? It can never be normal. It can never be normal. When giving becomes a regular practice, you have touched God. You have provoked God. He said, by myself have I sworn. It's an oath that cannot be broken. Some of you sisters, you are just praying, oh Lord, send my husband, send my husband. Drop your seed. Watch out whether the husband will come or not. Drop your seed. You know the funniest thing is that you give once, you'll now be watching. It's not trade by butter. Every day you'll be scrolling your phone. Is there any text message that looks like a husband material? No, it doesn't work that way. What you believe, you practice. Lord, as I'm releasing my seed, my right man will come. My desired man will come. You have prayed enough. Fight the things that are fighting you. You need your seed to wage your battle. You don't know some of these delays. It's, it's just spiritual on that one. Wedge it with your seed. I've not seen any devil that can swallow a sacrifice. Where the mouth, where go take chopper. An enemy can resist your prayer, but not your sacrifice. I shared a testimony before of a woman, her friend. That's why you must be, called, be careful of what you call friend. Went to a herbalist for her marriage to scatter. She's already penetrating the husband, small, small. So she went to a herbalist to fire the thing. So after she went to do the automobile, she went and related the matter to another friend that the way the husband is doing now is like a, it's flowing, you know, the thing is flowing. He will soon enter. He will soon enter. So he was now saying, which person is that? So he described the person that they're they already having problem now. They're already having problem. So she went and told that their friend, their friend, friend. You better run, no. She don't go do something, no. She tell me, say she go have a list. See what she pay. So that one had it. Okay, she went to have a list. She did 50,000. She, she went to her pastor, dropped her own seed, 70,000. The pastor prayed in less than one week. You remember I told you, there's a difference between you the Chris and you the mad. <laughs> so when someone is walking naked on the road, what do you call it? <laughs> Correct. You are my good student. <laughs> the team backfired. And as she's walking on the road, she will be calling that woman's name. She will be calling that woman. That was when they now knew that this is what happened to her. Your seed can wage your battle. Seed can wage your battle. We call it vengeance seed. It can work anything. Your seed can place in your hand a new job. Let me summarize here. A woman, the husband has been in the U.S. for some number of years. As a medical doctor in Nigeria, I hope you know when you go there, you must write their own exam. The man has been writing the thing and been failing woefully, as if he never went to school. They fail, eh? <laughs> they fail bad. To the point that the children we are no longer sustained in the school that they were going so they had to go to a lesser school because it's only the woman now that is providing with her salary with her salary so the woman cried and cried she now came to the office one day she said pastor my husband has been failing this exam he has been failing this exam please pray so that he will pass the next one that is about to do because we know that if he pass he will not be license to practice as a medical doctor and will have the chance to travel 
I told her, there's no prayer. Go and, go and package your seed. If you want him to pass, so a seed, there is a force that must be broken. If you talk of intelligence, the man is intelligent. So she sowed her seed. Now all the four children plus her, they have relocated to U.S. As, she, as the man entered the exam, you all cleared it in one hand. You may be wondering, is it that easy? Yes. One hand, thing just clear. I want to assure you, your days of suffering, they are over. Yeah. If your seed is in your hand, there is no height you will not reach. Stop suffering. Stop suffering. Program it in your heart. As far as kingdom promotion is concerned and giving is concerned, I will take advantage of every opportunity. Every opportunity. Is it giving to the widows or to the orphans? Regular. I'm no longer shadow. As it comes, I do. As it comes, I do. I know they connect on anyone, so when they come to, I go use spirit to catch them. There are some that come. Uh, you know, there are professional beggars. As we are now, they say, yes, pastor, we don't get one customer. That after service now, we'll come and target you. Come. I will use on your commuter <laughs> and x-ray you very well. <laughs> if it is, I, I know how I operate. If I see the fake ones, I say, Amos! Amos, take care of this person. Once I say Amos, he knows you are wrong. <laughs> you are not a correct... But if it's a correct welfare need, straight. I know what to do. If I have it there, I just take it and give it immediately. If, it, if what I'm holding in my hand is not enough, that's okay. Amos, raise so and so much. But if I just tell you, Amos, take care of this person, you will know that you are a wrong person. <laughs> are you wrong saying now? There are professional beggars in church. They are, they are claiming, yes, pastor is talking about us so that they will be giving to us. Should I tell you something? Grow and give to others. They didn't stamp poverty on your forehead. Hmm? They didn't stamp it on for your forehead. Pastor, tell them, tell them, tell them, so that they will be given to us. Where I'm talking to you too. You do you know that you have, your family is earnestly praying and believing God that it will be well with you, so that you can be reaching out to them. I pray for you. Anyone whose family has been expecting their financial story to be turned around, I decree by the grace upon my head, your financial story will be turned around. Yeah. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Yeah. Now let me connect this to noiseless breakthrough. There are breakthrough that does not require prayer and fasting. You have struggled enough. There are breakthroughs that does not require prayer and fasting. Your seed can fight your battle. Your seed can silence your enemies. This is what we call cheap victory. They say, who dash monkey banana? There are some access places I've entered that by my labor, I, will not, I wouldn't have been able to enter it or even meet the people. But my seed has opened the door. He that goeth forth, bearing precious seed to sow, shall doubtless return. Let me tell you this. Your seed has a voice. Your seed gives you a voice in the realm of the spirit. What the enemy is using against you is also a sacrifice. Lift up your own sacrifice and silence the altars of your enemies. seed has a voice. Dr. Polenenche calls it battle seed. The thing will be hitting. You don't know where it's coming from.
Don't forget, I told you that every sacrifice, every seed we give is a spiritual transaction. It cancels the bad and releases the good. It alters the negative and releases the positive. Every time you release your seed, Jehovah, the power, the personality behind the altar goes to fight your battle. When God is the one fighting, you will rest. You have fought like a man. Rest. Let God fight for you. One of the cheapest ways to assess noiseless breakthrough is to engage your seed. Is to stare up God into action. It's a mystery. Me, I can't explain it. But I know it is working and so I keep activating it to work. There are some doors that will not open until your seed is going. So if you want to experience higher open door, trigger your seed and watch out what will happen. Pastor Ibiomi said something. He said, when Papa read, God's will for you is prosperity, that what Papa saw was tightening. He said, when he, he read his own, what he saw was prophet offering. If you like, argue now your head. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? If you like, argue now your head. Does that mean it's not tightening? It's tightening dangerously. Dangerous tighter. It's also a dangerous giver. He said, through, through, through tithing, through giving, he said, you connect to grace, you connect to creativity, you connect to anointing, you connect to open heaven. Stop struggling. You are struggling too much. You are doing as if everything that will come to you is by your power. It's a lie. If it is your labor that will take you to where God has prepared for you, God is not relevant. And it is your labor. You will never get to the peak of your life. You will never. Embrace giving as a lifestyle. See kingdom opportunities as, as something you, you should cash in. It. And before you know what's happening, you are getting to your topmost top. Noiseless breakthrough is cheap. When giving becomes a lifestyle, there are things you don't struggle. You don't struggle. You don't struggle. I remember I did something one day. I bought Richard's card, worth 30,000. I was, I was sent to Papa, Bishop Abie, Bishop Aremu, Bishop Olorunda, Bishop uh, Boime. So something happened. Do you know what happened? Every day I started getting Richard's card, Richard's card, Richard's card. I said, Lord, what's happening? He said, What you sow is what you get. Since you are provoked, <laughs> the storehouse of recharge card be getting recharge card. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I said no. I will change the order. I will change the order because you can't sow pineapple and reap purple. So I said no. I won't do this one again. I'll be. I'll just do this one and do this one. I hear what I'm saying now. And as I did it, the thing also followed. Anyhow you want it, you will see it. Every seed you sow carries a tag. Every seed you sow carries a tag. I've told you, your seed gives you a voice because it has a voice. There are voices, voices that are shouting you down in the realm of the spirit. Let your seed go and quench it. I say your seed will go and quench it. As I'm talking now, someone is saying, I don't have... I don't have is a demonic spirit. He will tell you, I hope you know that you don't have. Don't mind this pastor. He's using sweet mouth to be. Should I tell you something? Remain in your poverty. So that you will know it's not sweet mouth. I am telling you what we are practicing. 
Because it is what you practice that you can tell someone. And do you know what? I'm making sure that this habit is affecting my children. Monica entered their hand now. They said, Mommy, remove our tithe. Remove our tithe. Have you paid our tithe? Do we pay our tithe? Then the remaining one, keep it. When we go to see Papa or Bishop Abiyah, we'll sow it as, as seed. They are already getting their culture so that they can live their future. Am I saying something to someone? Hear me? You will get to where God has in mind for you. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Rise up to your feet. Giving the cheapest way to connect to noiseless breakthrough. Noiseless breakthrough. How did Jacob connect it? He gave. He gave to provoke something. Jacob connected his noiseless breakthrough by his giving. And his one blessing landed on his head. When giving is at work, you enter the realm of noiseless breakthrough. Noiseless breakthrough. Papa carried the seed the other time. To late Archbishop. He said, My son, when others come, they come to collect. When, when you come, you come to bless. He said, I impart upon you the gift of untie before a need arise, the supply will be on ground. Till today, that grace is still working. That gift of untie, you will never lack. Amen. I'd like you to lift up your voice. Lord, change my story. Change my story. Change my story. Release upon me a new giving life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let my addiction for giving come alive. Stay up something in me that will move me forward. That will cause me to do what I have never done before. Let God hear your voice. Lift up your voice wherever you are. Release upon me that giving grace. That giving grace. That will bring me to the realm of noiseless breakthrough. Noiseless breakthrough. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Bring out your oil in case you have one. If you don't have, collect from your neighbor. The anointing is another platform to assess noiseless breakthrough. Scripture say, when oil was poured, the spirit came. What was poured? What came? Stand up. Stand up. It shall come to pass on that day that the body shall be taken away from thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck. Say, because of the anointing, every yoke shall be destroyed. Please make sure the person next to you have an oil in his hand or in her hand. Make sure someone has an oil. As this oil come upon you today, any mysterious battle you have been fighting, any mysterious attack you have been going through, by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, the yoke is destroyed. <laughs> Before we put this oil on our head, if you are here, you are not born again, use the other hand and put on your chest and say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I come unto you today. I know that I am a sinner. Forgive me. Wash me with your precious blood. I reject sin. I reject Satan. Come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. If you pray that prayer with me, come because I must anoint you. Come. Carry your bag and your Bible and come. Hold on. 
take a little of that oil on your palm right now. You pray that prayer with me. Come. God bless you. Come. If you pray that prayer with me, 